If you've ever been in a deer stand and daydreamed about the effectiveness of a larger caliber rifle on that pesky squirrel making all that racket, well, today's video is for you. Over the years, I've used all the calibers from 177 on rats, 22 on pigeons, 25 on pretty much everything like this little chipper's face. 762, or as we like to call it around here, the Dirty 30, was great on little chip shots like this, as well as the long ones. The 9mm, though, my current EDC has been doing a whole lot of heavy lifting of late. But if you've been around here long enough, you know I'm always open to pushing the limits in the name of science to educate you all on all things pew pew. So let's pause for a sec to get my lab coat on and safety glasses, of course, because your pal and pest control professor Ega and Leshy, I got something new in the mail. This guy, this 45 cal big bore air gun, the bush pig carbine from Western Air Gun sent to me by Egg Gun West. Uh, this is fully capable of putting well over 400 foot pounds. Uh, and this is taking large game in Africa, no problem. But today, in the name of science, we're going to explore the overall effectiveness on small game. While it was inevitable I would eventually do this, uh, today was unintentional. And how it all played out is the topic of today's Egg Gun Leshy story time. So it was off to the farm, and when I arrived, my buddy Jay had a little surprise for me, his very own table for one. The only issue? I only brought up the 45 cal bush pig. We'll get back to that problem here in just a minute. First things first, I need to get this pig dialed in. The Achilles heel of big boy air guns is shot count, and this gun is going to basically get you two useful shots, which is fine for hunting, but on a range day, man, that would suck to have to fill every two shots. But there is a solution. So let me walk you through this rig and show you how to really kind of get around that shotgun problem for squirrel turkey shoots like you're about to see later in this video or just normal range days hit and steal. First, you got the gun. This is the 45 cal bush pig from Western Air Guns. Up top, I'm rocking the new compact Delta Optics 3.5 to 21 scope. Unreal value in my humble opinion, by the way. To quiet things down, out the front, I got the Donnie FL. This gun is obviously not a backyard plinker, but my goal was to just make it quiet enough to not need ear pro, and the Donnie FL delivered that perfectly. As you might be able to see, I have the fill hose connected directly from the bottle to the gun. Let me show you a little bit closer up here. So the gun doesn't have a gauge, which is so dumb, by the way. Uh, but to solve that uh, and give me more shots on the range, I have it tethered directly to the largest bottle made by Top Gun Air Guns. It's called their Great White Tank, and it comes fully rigged up just like you're seeing this. To fill the gun exactly to the optimal pressure, I have this external regulator from Huma Air. So this allows me to regulate the pressure coming out of the bottle and into the gun. So I can then degas it uh, and remove the hose and walk off into the woods with my two shots on board. Or if I leave it on like I'm doing in this video, it will continue to regulate the pressure in the gun to the exact settings needed, effectively giving me first shot results until the tank empties or goes below my desired pressure, I should say. So originally I had just taken the day off of work to dial in this gun and then do some scouting of the property for some upcoming hunts. But Jay's table for one, that had different plans for us. So we decided to bait this thing up a little bit. Uh, and then we were gonna take the e-bikes out for a lap around the farm and come back and see if there was any action. But man, we were fumbling around a little bit, just getting bags and stuff ready. And I happened to look over my shoulder and we had some immediate action from a chipper. So I used the car just off camera as a blind for the critters not to see us moving around because I was moving the table. Uh, but once they got down to the peanuts, man, they were just laser focused and we had a straight shot. The bush pig is a bolt action single shot, so you can cock it halfway for less power or you can rack it all the way back for full power. This combined with the pressure that you fill the gun to essentially allows you to shoot super heavy slugs like these 470 grain monsters or these much smaller hollow point options like this 150 grain guy from Mr. Hollow Point. For small game, the smaller and faster projectile, especially it being a hollow point, is gonna result in something like you're seeing here, where the heavy slug going much lower is just gonna put a big clean hole like this shot here.
The faster moving 150 grain slug results in explosions on impact, but don't let the lack of visuals fool you. This heavy and slow method dumps more of its energy into the critter resulting in tumbling through the air like you just saw. All right, I think we probably have a few minutes before anything else is dumb or brave enough to check out the peanuts. So time for a little rip around the farm to check out a deer stand. So uh, navigating this big property and chasing squirrels, turkey, and deer got a whole lot easier about a year ago when Hemingway approached me to check out their e-bikes. So uh, this thing has just been an absolute game changer and will be a fixture on upcoming adventures outside of my yard. As always, uh, make sure to check out the description for links and deals on all the stuff I use, really. But Hemingway always hooks you guys up with some discounts, so make sure to check that out in the description. So here's that spot I wanted to show you guys. It's one of probably 15 deer stands that he's got on the property, but according to my buddy, not a lot of deer at this one. It's more of a hot spot for squirrels and the occasional coyote, which would explain the lack of deer. So I could sit up here and scan with my thermal binos and just snipe. Uh, these shots would be, I don't know, maybe 50 to 100 yards. So I've hunted this spot before, and it's full of, uh, definitely full of squirrels, but it's always just been walking through it. I've never actually sat up in a sat up in a tree and camped for them. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Should I come back and do a video here? I think it might be kind of fun. So speaking of fun, uh, this little ride uh, should have given us enough time for the, uh, or should have given the guarded destroyers enough time to come back and check out Jay's new table for one. And as luck would have it, a few more did. Now this guy had seen better days. His left eye was missing, and the other one was about to get a 150 grain piece of lead going right through it. I was able to actually catch, oh, you can see it right here too. Look at the expansion on that slug. We're gonna have to check that out at the end. Oh yeah, that'll put you in the hurt box, oof. This one I'm gonna have to edit around for YouTube, but from an educational perspective, the takeaway is a 45 cal slug will snap the head right off a squirrel. Quick, very humane, practical, nope. So I ran out of slugs I was using, and I had to switch to a different size. So I shot a quick reference shot off camera to figure out what the hold was going to be while we were waiting in between shots, and that one was perfect. I'll show it to you one more time here. I actually had to hold under on this one and then about a mil to the right. This gun is obviously not intended for small game hunting or pest control, but using it for uh, this has allowed me to uh, get pretty comfortable with the super heavy trigger and recoil. And after all, if I can hit a uh, tiny target like a chipmunk or a squirrel headshot, sending one into the breadbasket of a deer will be a piece of cake. If you like shots like this, you should probably watch this video next.